Our guests in this segment, Ashley Horst and Cindy Powers from Shepherd. Good morning to you both. Thanks for coming in. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Cindy, is the first time you've been on with us? It sure is, yes. Well, welcome. Great Thanks to have you. Me. And Ashley, you're a veteran of the program now. I've been here a time or two now. Yeah, okay, I might need you both to move in closer to your microphone so we can hear you nice and clearly, though, too. So uh, there is a leadership program that has been uh, developed at Shepherd University, which is fairly unique from what we understand in the state of West Virginia. Talk to us more about this. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So uh, we're with the Stubblefield Institute for Civil Political Communications, and what we've done is we have launched this semester a community leadership and civil advocacy certificate, and we've not found anything like this throughout the state. And lots of schools have leadership programs. However, most of them don't partner it with the advocacy piece. So not only are we equipping our students to be uh, civil leaders and civil servants and leaders within their groups, their um, communities, but also equipping them with the tools to advocate for themselves and others within um, whatever government structure they find themselves. Can any student follow this certificate or do you have to be in a certain major? No, nope, any student across the campus. And Cindy, you're in charge of this program. Yes, I run the Listen, Learn, Engage initiative, which is the student-facing programming for the Stubblefield Institute. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we've decided to partner with Student Affairs and Academic Affairs to create this robust certificate and really help give students more of an intentional way to navigate um, their community and advocating for themselves. What is required to earn this certificate? It is 50 hours um, of a combination of workshops and attending events, as well as 17 hours of which are community service. So there's a lot of um, bridge building within it, really trying to get students to connect with people outside of their typical bubble or their department on campus, and connecting them in with their community resources and giving them the skills to do that wherever they go. What does it mean to advocate for oneself and others? What's, what does that mean? So from the angle that we're looking, we're really wanting to teach students how to identify a problem, um, whether it affects them, whether it affects someone close to them, and develop a solution, identify their partners in developing that solution, and then advocating whether it's their um, county commission, their state government, whether it's the university leadership, whatever group it is that has the power to make change, that's, we want them to engage and we want them to engage effectively. In this day and time, how difficult is that? Or do you find the students to be exceptionally receptive to picking up the engagement part? We've been really excited. Uh, when we launched this program, we um, we suspected that there would be interest, but it's really gone above and beyond what we thought. We currently have 27 students enrolled in this certificate, and that's at a time when a lot of organizations on campus are struggling to struggling for membership. And so our students are ready, they're excited. Cindy, do you want to talk a little bit more about LEADS and how that led into it? Yeah, we launched the program during the summer leadership program called LEADS, and um, so we really um, hammered it into students about our passion for civility and communication and navigating conflict and gave them the opportunity to gain up to 20 credits towards this um, certificate. And so when we came out of that program, um, we had several students signed up for it. Um, we had them talking to other students about it. S civil has become a buzzword on campus. Students talking about how that's not civil or let's get civil. And when we go to big events, you have a, a large presence of these students who are engaged in our summer leadership program. And they're leading student groups and they're just showing up for everything. So, yeah, we're finding a lot more engagement than we have of course through the pandemic especially let me circle back very quickly when you came in we said it, we're talking about unique to west virginia my discussion with you previously it's unique to the u.s as a whole that you do not know of another university that's trying to couple uh these uh the engagement and the leadership is that correct that is correct so we have looked at several different um, leadership programs and uh, we certainly see political communication programs but to put those together and open it to 
anyone and make it accessible to anyone within the university is certainly unique. And the other piece is that we are working on building this out so that it's not only Shepherd students who can participate, but students throughout the um, state and our region. And ultimately, we would like to open this up to businesses as well. I was going to say business. You're, in the past, you've spoken of the, the impact it could have on businesses. We tend to think of discussions such as this for the government or people running for public office. But it's equally applicable, if not more so, to business. Absolutely. A lot of our businesses, and I know um, from my time in healthcare that part of the job is often interfacing with the government entities that govern your business. And so we're trying to equip our students, our business people, uh, once we launch that phase of the certificate, to do that in a way that is civil, in a way that is productive and effective. Because if we're all working together, we can create a society that works better for all of us. Yeah. yeah. So, I'm sorry. No, go right ahead. Oh. Yeah. Um, so if I'm a, I'm a history major and I'm a junior, all right, make the pitch. What, what, why do I want to join this program and what do I look to get out of it? Yeah, so no matter what work you go into as a history major, you're going to be engaging with other people, you're going to be coming up against rules that may not work for you, or even your community outside of your job, really. Um, and so by engaging in this program, you're starting to better understand your own leadership strengths and skills and how you can apply them to the field that you go into, um, as well as how you'll be able to create change within the field that you go into, um, or how you can engage in the political system that will naturally be of impacting you no matter where you are. You, you mentioned earlier and you alluded to the fact that one of the byproducts of this is to make students more comfortable outside of their bubble, outside of the little community which they reside in. Would you develop that thought? Yeah, a big piece of building civility and a culture of respect is getting to know people who are different from yourself. And I think coming out of the pandemic, that is especially challenging. We have everything, everyone has become a bit more siloed, which was a problem even before the pandemic. And so really forcing students to go to events outside of their major and go to local leadership events, um, government events and things like that. Where, and the community service is also meant to do that as well, where they go out and they do something productive for the community with people that they wouldn't otherwise be engaging with and getting to know those who are different from themselves, who they might have these preconceived ideas about, and then they learn that, oh, they have more in common with these people than they might have thought that they had more differences with. How do you gauge your success? Before you answer that, I, I, I share, I, I agree with you, something you said earlier that it's picking up with the, the, with the uh, on campus. I had the opportunity via your invitation, Cindy, uh, to speak at a, one of the award ceremonies, some, I think, last spring, on a Saturday evening. I came away, Saturday afternoon, I guess, uh, I came away in, in awe of the fact the room was full of students on a Saturday afternoon all talking about civility. So uh, so my hat's off to you and the others that put this on. But what other ways are you gauging the interest of the students in becoming more civil in their dealings with others? Um, a few different ways. One, we have a student civility club on campus and they are really spreading awareness about this and sharing back with us you know, just about the fact that like civility is a buzzword on campus and uh, just letting us know what is alive for students right now and what their interest is around this topic. Um, and then as students engage with any of our programming, they do a pre-evaluation and a post-evaluation. Um, so they do a lot of self-evaluating around where they've built their confidence, how they're connecting with others. Um, yeah, so we're, we're trying to create markers along their, their journeys as they engage with us. So when we talk about civility, um, there are a lot of different shades of meaning to that word, and sometimes I think one of the best ways to, to define a word is to talk about the antonym of the word. So how does, what's the itch we're scratching? How does lack of civility manifest itself as opposed to what civility th that you're pushing for? 
So I would say that um, the itch that we're scratching is polarization. It's the um, siloing, as um, Cindy said, where we see students who have different opinions, but they're afraid to talk about them. They're afraid to engage with one another for fear that either someone's going to think they're wrong, someone's going to disagree with them, because we're in this place, especially if you look at, you know, during the pandemic, we spent two years on social media where you say something and then five people yell at you for what you say. And so that's it's just like hosting a talk show, by the way. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we're trying to overcome. We're trying to instill the ability to have civil conversations. And when I say civil, um, I think a lot of times people confuse civil and nice that we're not trying to create conversations where everybody agrees with one another. That's not going to happen. It's not realistic. It shouldn't happen. And so what we're trying to do is create, a, create our, in our students the ability to talk to one another, to say, it's okay if we disagree, but we can also talk about these things because I might learn something from you, you might learn something from me. We don't have to change our minds. With the um, programming that the Stubblefield Institute does, we don't seek to change people's minds. We're not telling you what to think. We're giving you the information and allowing you the opportunity to explore what it is that you think and feel and what it is that other people think, feel, and have experienced. And then what's the leadership part of it? How do, how do you teach that? So I know, and I'm going to kick this over to Cindy in just a minute, a lot of the leadership skills are things like giving and receiving feedback and creating safe spaces for difficult conversations. And Cindy can certainly point to a lot of the other leadership skills that we're teaching. Yeah, I think we really try and start with building self-awareness around what is your natural leadership ability and strengths? Where do your strengths lie? How can you apply them? Um, and then they do a variety of personal development within that and navigating conflict and communication. Um, and yeah, but I think that a big part of being an effective leader is these civility skills and how you are communicating effectively and listening. I mean, that is like at the very heart of what we are trying to get to our students is that the number one skill that you need as an effective leader is to be listening to other people around you, not just telling everyone what you think is right, but really listening and learning and making your decisions off of what you're understanding from the world around you. Let's go Pacifics for just a second. Uh, the Institute has been, I think, very upfront uh, and very aggressive in addressing controversial issues, one of which is uh, uh, caring on campus. And you had one, uh, one meeting with the students recently, uh, and then you're planning another one with the community as a whole, uh, realizing fully that this is a lot of strong feelings on both sides of the issue. Would you speak to that particular issue carrying on campus? Absolutely. So that is the um, Campus Self-Defense Act, and it goes into effect on July 1st of 2024. And so what are, we did have our first conversation was campus wide and it was intended for students, staff and faculty. And we did invite our legislators and we had several who attended. The next phase of that is coming up on November 6th. And um, we're in the process of inviting our legislators. So if we have any of them listening and you haven't gotten a call from us, you will in the next day or so. And that's going to be open to the community as a whole. And that will be a small group discussion where our participating legislators are going to be paired with a facilitator from the Stubblefield Institute to have a exactly that a small group discussion where people can ask questions, express support, express concerns, um, make suggestions, and really have um, a dialogue about that particular bill because there are strong feelings on both sides. I know um, Shepherd is an interesting place because um, we have it is very diverse politically and sometimes one side seems to be more evident than the other but both sides are very much in existence when it comes to this bill do you intend what uh uh with the students i understand you had a fairly large group uh you're going but you're going to promote the next one to the community as Correct. a whole the community regional community or the community around shepherd 
it would be regional so yeah. whoever is interested in coming i don't i don't know that we can limit it to yeah. shepherdstown i believe that it will be wider than that yeah i was not talking about limiting i was just talking about promotion promotion to a particular group so you're going to promote it fairly widely yes and correct further. Now, with the strong emotions, we've all seen, and fortunately with the Institute, uh, we have not had, and we've had controversial subjects, we have always had a very civil uh, audience. Uh, but with something as controversial as, camp as Campus Carry, you perhaps will get beyond the civil audience. What steps will you take to ensure the civility throughout both the, the individuals on the stage and those in the audience? So that's why we're doing the small group format. So we won't have individuals on a stage, so to speak. When you come into the room, there will be um, groupings of chairs. So that way, it's a lot easier to maintain civility in a small group where you and I can have a conversation. I can ask you questions, you can respond, as opposed to having people on a stage talking at you or and you having to submit questions and maybe your question gets read and because it is challenging when you're doing a panel discussion like that you always have more questions than you do time and so the other piece of that is that's really key is the facilitator and that is why each group will have a facilitator who is charged and they're going through special training to do this to maintain that conversation and we will set those expectations ahead of time and um, ask everyone to abide by respecting each other. You know, we're not going to call each other names. That's not appropriate. Um, and really sticking to the topic at hand. Yeah, an individual that has had some experience with the Stubblefield Institute that is a regular guest uh, on this show, at least on Friday, is Alonzo Perry. And Alonzo uh, submitted a chat a couple minutes ago saying he, how impressed he was with the opportunity he had to, uh, uh, to participate with the Institute. Now, would you get try to solicit individuals such as Alonzo that has been with the university has a fairly wide large name recognition would he be the type of individual you'd, you'd seek to have as one of the uh, uh, moderators um, I mean we are we would certainly love to have Alonzo join us and um, we do have a training set up for our moderators so if Lon Alonzo would like to participate in it he would need to contact mm -hmm. us because it is a formal training that mm -hmm. so that way we are all on the same page and following the same guidelines mm -hmm. Ashley Horst and Cindy Powers are guests mm -hmm. here on the program for those of you joining us on the radio and not uh, having the benefit of seeing the subtitles uh, beneath their uh, faces on our TV screen good Bill now I was going to say Alonzo I just set you up <laughs> <laughs> it occurs to me that a lot of what you're addressing and God bless you for it, is um, it's a, kind of a 21st century problem. Because when I was growing up, the these discussions happened all the time around dinner tables and such. Now it seems like over time we've evolved, and maybe it's social media, um, we've evolved into camps where as soon as someone starts to disagree, they get up and leave. So I think what's so valuable from what I'm hearing here is you get people together and come from opposite ends of, of things and they give voice to their particular take on an issue even if no minds are changed and I've had this happen a number of times I have very dear friends who are politically polar opposite from me but there's comfort in knowing that I know that they're smart I know that they come at this issue with the same data that I have but they have different life experience or whatever so smart people honestly believe the thing that I think is wrong. And ideally, they think the same about me. It's just we don't, there is no one truth on anything political, right? So I, th I think this is wonderful to have these kinds of, of discussions and to have an avenue for it. Can you give me a feel within the student population? Is it going to be mostly liberal arts types who are coming to this? Is there a, have you done the demographic of, of what majors or what? I think we're going to get a wide variety of students because this is a topic that affects everyone. And I think not only are we going to get a wide variety of students, I think we're going to get a wide um, swath of the public who either are opposed to this legislation or support this legislation. Um, I already have in mind a couple of groups who I have a feeling will be there and can certainly lend their voices to the conversation. And so I think we are really going to see good um, opposing views but a good discussion coming out of that i do think that this 
particular topic address um, brings in students across all majors and if anything you see more student leaders We're doing specifically the campus carry yes yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and especially like RAs for example who will be really impacted by the legislation and their positions um, so yeah it really draws students across all majors into this you know every Friday we see what you're referring to John uh, individuals around the table that do not agree on uh, on the political issue, in fact, we have fairly divergent views, but it's always done in a very civil manner, and you're sharing information. I think that's what Ashley and Cindy are trying to promote here. Have open discussion, but do not get mad and just share information. Absolutely. Have you got any pushback? Are there people who are trying to get in the way of these discussions happening? Not really. I think the biggest thing is... Um, I think there's some hesitancy for some people to participate um, because they're a little nervous about how uh, maybe students are going to react. They're a little bit nervous about what um, the public might say. And so I really am just encouraging to everyone, if you're at all, if you at all have a feeling about this bill one way or another, come out and join us. And that's um, November 6th at five o'clock in the store ballroom at Shepherd University. And uh, you have to have tickets or you to show up or what? Uh, we will be putting it on Eventbrite and that will go live today. So we would like you to have a ticket so that way we know how many groups for which we need to plan. And all of that information can be found on our website, which is stubblefieldinstitute.org, or you can call us at 304-876-5005. Well, Bill, this is your institute. What do you think? I was going, excuse me, the tickets are free. Yes, the so, tickets are yeah, free. Yeah, we just want to uh, try to have some idea how to set up the room, but the tickets Correct. are free. Uh, I think this is an example of what we're trying to achieve from day one. Uh, we've got individuals that, that are passionate about what they're trying to do. They want to do one thing, and that one thing is get people to talk each other and forget about your silo, reach across the aisle, another silo. But do it in a polite, civil way. Absolutely. Very good. On that note, we'll take our break here. Thank you both very much for coming in. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. us. Yeah. You guys did that in stereo. Well, <laughs>